Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map, and this is another installment in my Tarot Map series, um, Inspired Tarot Map. So this time I'm hosting uh, Melissa Lucia, whom <laughs> I don't think I have to introduce again, but I will. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Nice to see you again. So if you watched my previous episodes, there is an episode with Melissa Lucia already when we talk about um, Oracle of Initiation, which Melissa created. So she has created one of my favorite decks ever. So I'm excited to always show this deck. And you know me, guys, if you watch me i used to be like head over heels about weaver's oracle um by caroline hillier so this is my weaver's oracle too like oracle of initiations and weaver's oracle they go go together so well so this is the creatrix of this wonderful deck and book and now she's coming up with a new deck which just like happened <laughs> september 18th so a month ago <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So, Melissa, you are coming with a new deck, and um, can you just tell us maybe just quickly, like the name of the deck and how did it even happen that it came to life? Sure, sure, absolutely. And it was funny because you did you did Instagram me. We had an Instagram back and forth, and you said I didn't know you were doing a new deck, and I said I didn't know I was doing a new deck either. Um, so it was seven years ago when I finished the Oracle of Initiation, which you just showed. And um, the I'm obsessed with cemeteries and santos, and I'm not Catholic. I'm, I'm a jolly pagan, very, very pagan. Um, but I've always loved Guadalupe, um, Mother Mary, Jesus, all of those, any sort of iconography that's generally been more Catholicized. And then I started to find as I grew some of the more indigenous traditions so the African Orishas and some of these things that were syncretized where the Catholics went over the top of them, like Guadalupe Tenatzin is underneath Guadalupe. And so I've been taking pictures of cemeteries, um, particularly in New Mexico. I've been to about 120 cemeteries here and also in Mexico, um, in Oaxaca and Guanajuato. And I'd been wanting to do a deck with the Santos, with the saints. That's the Spanish Mexican name for saints. And um, so, as I say, I've, I've got this huge body of photography work around this. And then for some reason on September 18th, I'm not sure why the ancestors and the Santos and <laughs> all of the guardians and guides came through and said, you're going to make a deck, a new deck. And so literally that day, um, because um, I'm able to upload and do the images very quickly, particularly for the prototypes, the, the deck literally was made in about four hours because it was the, the seed of it, because it was so ready to come through. And then some of the pieces and the um, layers of it, but it's called um, Santos and Signs, Holy Intermediaries for Sacred Journeys. So it's about... I don't see them, some people may be turned off because they'll see them as being very Catholic that they're, or Christian and, and, and their own wounds around it. And I am not saying that the world religions have not done grisly things. They've done grisly things. But at the heart of it, if you go into the heart of who these santos are, if you go into the heart of what these guardians are, it's like the Christ consciousness at its purest level. It's the pure energy, ascended energy of love and transformation and connection. And so for me, that's where I'm going with this without and, and blessings on um, Indigenous Peoples Day today here in the United States. I'm in the U.S. And this was the Columbus Day, which a lot of people who the original people who were here, they're pissed off because Columbus is not this thing to be really excited about because of the colonialism and the um, takeovers. Um, but so the deck came out of all of that, uh, out of this kind of pure energy of the magic of these disintegrating cemeteries and then these road signs, these literal decaying Route 66. A few of them are in, in Mexico. Um, a few of them are in California. 
but these these road signs for pilgrimages. Wow, so it's interesting. I also um, saw that the deck is like 104 cards and you <laughs> like two separate sizes, right? Okay, we, we come back to it. Don't show it yet. Don't, Don't show, show it. it. Okay, all right. We're let's holding just, up. They're sitting let's here. Just We're waiting. Come back to those road signs and, you know, yeah. um, I know that you travel a lot or like you do pilgrimages. And this is something which I would like to kind of pick your brain about a little bit because I love pilgrimaging and somehow I think you just, uh, I travel to places and I don't think of it as pilgrimage, but then I end up doing a pilgrimage. So sometimes it's not a conscious choice. I'm going on the pilgrimage. Yes. I just go on holidays and then it ends up one big pilgrimage. So I don't know exactly how it happens. Also, I do choose sometimes to go on a pilgrimage uh, and or walk, and that's also very powerful when you actually set an intention and go. You know, that's yeah. like makes it really special. So, how did like how did you start, or how do you treat your pilgrimages? Like, how does it fit into your artistic life? Because I assume it's probably for creative reasons you do that, or is it also a spiritual like side to it? Tell us about that. Absolutely. Um, so my, my belief is that humans that we're actually hardwired for myth and for magic and for some sort of a spirituality. And, and a, that's really different for different people. Some people's spirituality is being in nature. You know, this is, I'm, we're not talking church up in here at all. There's no disrespect to church. Church may be yours rock on. Um, but I believe that people need something that's transcendent beyond themselves, both as a way to inspire you and also as, as something that's humbling in a good way. That there's this sense that I'm not responsible for all of this. I'm not alone down here, that I didn't get, just get dumped into this body and this life and this experience, and I have to do it all myself. And that's really what's happened in the Western world is there's become this Western empiricism where the science has taken over, intellect has taken over, and there's this idea that we should be able to prove everything, and that if you can't see it, if you can't explain it, then there, it's, it's questionable. Um, it doesn't have real weight, it doesn't have real value. Well, the reality is, um, and I'm in the States, so I have very much a Western, American, educated, white, female perspective on this, absolutely but a person who's traveled to a lot of traditions. And so with this need, this, this need that we have, I feel like people are starving for this sense of magic and connection and also guidance, like how to make decisions and find the courage to be the person that you are. And so for me, cross-cultural, spiritual, divination, mystical traditions that's the way that i found to be willing and able to get out of bed each day i mean my, my art is all woven you can't separate my art from that and so the pilgrimage piece comes in um where there is i love adventures i'm the person who wants to see the next thing that's around the corner always always anywhere that we're interesting i want to see what that because I believe that the world is enchanted and that there's this dialogue that we can have. There's this never ending dialogue between whatever you want to call it, santos, spirits, guardians, ancestors, guides, angels. Some people think it's a higher self, rock on. Um, but to me, there's this dialogue. And, and as I say, my creativity and my spirituality, I, I can't separate them. They are one and the same. But that dialogue is this, to me, like there's, the world keeps going, hey, hey, we've got this cool idea like the muse is the collective unconscious and you're a human and you have hands and you have eyes and you can do things on a computer and draw things and paint things. I think we should make something together. I think we should do something together. I think we should do transformation together. And so in that, that to me is what pilgrimages are. Pilgrimages are saying, hey, I'm going to consciously come do this with you. I'm not going to know what's going to happen. I'm going to expect interesting things are going to happen, but I won't know what they are. So I just need to be aware. So what I call it is, is devotion in motion. It's like a life of being devoted and honoring and connected 
and, and as I say, spiritual, not religious. And so pilgrimages are this, and you can do a pilgrimage to anywhere as long as it's interesting to you and there's, I think, some reverence and some respect. You could do a pilgrimage to 7-Eleven. Like you could say, I'm going to go to the quick stop and I'm gonna go get some divination messages. I'm gonna to go to the candy aisle and I'm gonna have the messages that I need. And, and because it's, I think it needs to be playful also. But so tell me, you know, part of why I wanted to have this conversation is because you're, you are, even though you say maybe sometimes it's not so conscious, how do pilgrimages figure into your magical, divinatory, astrological life? So it's funny because it started really with religious pilgrimages because mm. I was, you know, raised Catholic and um, mm. we have this Black Madonna of Częstochowa and the whole country in like in, I think it's end of July. And I think they um, arrived there on the 15th of August, which is like big Mother Mary feast. Mm. Uh, they go on pilgrimage to Częstochowa, to this Black Madonna. And when I was 15, I went there. Then when I was 18, I went to Lourdes through all the like Southern France. And, but that was like, you know, I went with my mom when I was 18. I said like kind of gift to, uh, to finish, you know, high school. And then like, I wasn't even interested so much in pilgrimages themselves, but it was adventure. It was travel. That's why I said that to me, it's sometimes I end up being on a pilgrimage without even kind of, consciously wanting to be on the pilgrimage so for me i think it has a lot of this kind of um spiritual uh like aspect to it and then yeah. you know i had a huge break from the church and um like i will never go back but through walking with mary and you've done the walking with mary this year as well it just kind of renewed my interest. I love going to churches. I just love all these aesthetics. I love the artwork. I love to look for Mary everywhere. I want to take pictures of all the saints. So somehow it just, walking with Mary, I think let me not judge it so much and not separate so much because I think it was part of me that really needed to be integrated somehow. And I think yes. this is what's happening. So this pilgrimage is for me, like, you know, I walked to like the closest um, Miraculous Mary recently as well, 30 kilometers do, 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 do with a friend. So we said we're doing like a pagan Christian <laughs> yeah, yeah. walk, you know. It's, it's lovely. I don't know. To me, it's like um, a pilgrimage can really renew a sense of trust or a sense of what you just said, like a magic in life. And I love the idea which you gave that you can have a pilgrimage to 7-Eleven to look for signs because yeah. signs always come during pilgrimages and it's this like yeah this openness that you keep it's amazing mm -hmm. it is yeah. it is and you know i it's so so many so many thoughts on what you what you said <laughs> I, part of what so one of my teachers who's in southern california beatrix quintana she does an amazing moon book by the way um i'm always a big promoter of the people's work that i love just like you um so beatrix this was, I was, as I say, she's in Southern California. When I was living there, I would go to her every other week, moon classes. And she had said, this was about eight years ago. I can't remember the exact, because I'm not an astrologer. I don't remember the exact planets and everything. But this was about, probably, this is about eight years ago. And she said, about in the next eight years, we're going to be healing the heart of the world's religions. And she said that, and every cell in my body went, <gasps> what if we did that? Mm. What if, what if the, the ugliness and the divisiveness and the controllingness and the power over and all that effed up stuff that's gotten trapped in the world religions, what if we went back to that, that heart of it, that heart of it, which is gives you something that's beyond yourself and gives you something to believe in and, and this belief in grace and this, belief that we try to be people do unto others as you would have them do unto you that you try to be a person who is the the best person that you can be from your heart and so i feel like we're we're in the midst of that and so like you say hetienne the french madonna on instagram amazing her decks she's making the black madonna deck oh my gosh <laughs> and she has the first deck um how, how long how long have we wanted a black Madonna deck? Holy to moly, our whole, our whole lives. 
Um, but, but I feel like what's happening is that there is a healing of that, that currently what's really available to us as objects that we can buy because humans like altars and physical representations of things you know i see your altar behind you with all your yummy stuff you could if i've moved my you know we've got this but if i moved my this around you'd see my altars everywhere but i i feel like what's available and accessible you know now to do jewelry of carrie paris and all that sort of stuff is the more catholic christian stuff but i feel like many of us are feeling what's inside of that what is the earth mother what is the basis of the heart of all of this so it's some of it's looking more catholic and i honestly sometimes i feel like i almost need to apologize for the catholic stuff to be honest because it's so grisly <laughs> and, and that's not just the catholics it's it's humans have been doing grisly things to humans like that's what we've been doing but so somehow but i also can't deny that since i was a teenager in the 80s i wanted to travel the world and visit cemeteries and i i live i was an au pair in, in milan italy when i was a 20 or when i was 20 in the late 80s early 90s and i have pictures traveling with my mom in italy of me looking at the madonnas that are in niches up on the sides of the walls because italy rocks like that so does of course mexico and new mexico and so there's this is something that I can't deny. I've never been able to deny it. Guadalupe, I'm Guadalupe. Like I belong to Guadalupe. I'm gonna go, speaking of, so excited, in September, I mean, um, December on the 12th, on her feast day, down here in Southern New Mexico, they have this astonishing Guadalupe, this like four day Guadalupe festival. Like it goes all night and it's, oh, so I'm going. So, so cool. I so if I, anyway, so I wish I was closer because I, would I know you need and you need thing. to come you need to come next Easter to Chimayo with me. We need to walk to Chimayo here in New Mexico too. So you, we got to talk about that. I would love to. Where we'll do something, but let's go back to these altars because we yeah. all love altars, and I know that a lot of people from the like, tarot community and you know divination community they do have altars and use altars. So if you were like shortly tell why you have altars, like what do altar altars kind sure. of give you or like Absolutely. how do you um, work with your altars do you change them often like mm -hmm. tell us about your altars well so here's the funny thing you know because this weaves into the to the deck to the santos and signs deck um there's been so part of my story just tiny tiny dip of the story you can go watch the other um video that we did but my husband died 17 years ago and so i had this certain life um this very martha stewart affluent life in seattle i was going to have kids i was going to be a mom it was going to be awesome um but the prop the thing was i was an empath that nobody told me that i was an extremely psychic empath <laughs> and so i was anxious and depressed like extremely anxious and depressed um because i hadn't nobody had trained me and i didn't know how to to deal with my own porous field that is helpful with art but not so helpful with wounded people around you and um so altars so this so basically for the last 17 years and that was when the oracle deck was made during a six-year part of this journey after my husband christopher died saint christopher um the um i've traveled quite a bit on and off i mean i'll, I'll live somewhere like three years or something and then i'll i won't have a place to live for two or three years and i'll travel and teach and then i'll come back and have a place to live and so i've landed again in my favorite place in the world santa fe um the city of holy faith that's what the name means and so i really altars had to be a little more organic and simple when i was traveling everywhere and living in my in in my car no no disrespect of homelessness you know like i was choosing to live in my car um but uh so now there were there were three things that I wanted when I was going to have a place a solid place to live again. I wanted my clothes hung up so that they were nice, so my girly clothes were nice. I wanted my books in a in a bookshelf because I'm such a researcher. I needed to be able to not have them in boxes in the trunk of the car, and I wanted my altars back. And so I have insane altars everywhere. I have Guadalupe in every corner actually of the room, 
and um, I'm looking straight at one of my altars. I'm wondering if, let's see if we're, I, I don't want to make people feel sick, but let's see. Let's <laughs> see that minute. Okay, there's a Guadalupe that I got in, um, in Oaxaca, beautiful Guadalupe. You know, the, the whitewash of Jesus, of Jesus, not having it. Jesus was, Jesus was brown. Jesus was, so here is, this is my, um, this is the altar that's happening right now over here. Um, and I'll take, I have some pictures of these, Kasha. I'll go put them on Instagram. You can tag them on Instagram. And then also there's this project that's been bubbling. Let me see, how do I, that's been bubbling called Dreamtime Playhouse. So basically I want to write a movie about that has all these different characters. And then there's a Guadalupe in the corner. I don't know if you can see, but Guadalupe yeah. is in every single corner of this room. And there's stones, that, you know, under the bed and everything. But so to me, I hope I didn't make anybody nauseous. Sorry. No, it was actually okay. Um, so to me, altars are the, an externalized form of prayer. Divination cards can be the same thing, but to me, that's why I like to put divination cards up is because it's reminding me what's important. That's what altars are for. And also it's, it's an honoring and appreciation of what's important, but basically you put on altars what's important to you. So like I say, I'm looking at Guadalupe. I'm looking at my black Madonna from Einzendown. I'm looking at some, a, a black candle that's going to be for Dia de los Muertos. I'm, there's some financial, you know, like abundance things. There's little communion of saints. There's all sorts of things that are reminding me, this is what's important. This is how I want to focus my life. This is when I get really human or vulnerable or arrogant or, you know, impatient or whatever my human foibles will be what's really important here, what's really matters, what really has power. And so that to me, altars are created for both petitions and asking for help, but also for honoring saying, I'm devoted to you. I belong to you in a good way. This is, this is who my prayers are to. And they're also beautiful. I mean, altars on, on the Walking with Mary on Instagram. If y'all haven't been on the Walking with Mary on Instagram, you are missing out. Totally. It's like every day I lose my shit over these altars that these other, I think it's mostly women. I'm going to be straight with you. These, these altars that these other women have and a few wonderful men and, and non-binaries. Um, but these altars and these ways. So once again, this goes back to the fact that Unless we are carvers or we're carving, you know, some sort of our own or finding stones and things, which, which they will show up in the stones and things, but um, it's, it's more of the Catholic icons and things that are available, but I feel like we're making them our own. And that's where, you know, the Santos and Signs deck comes in, is to me the deck is about reclaiming the power and the heart and the magic of some of this iconography and also feeling like I've said over and over who's underneath who's at the heart of that who's and who's it been syncretized with you know who's who's the African Orisha or some of these other traditions that's underneath these more indigenous traditions and weaving them together wow this is really interesting with the altars it's beautifully said and also I think yeah that's when the intention of it's like um, making a photograph of the moment. Like in yes. this moment, this is in, like this is where I want to focus the attention, like or get the reminder, or yeah, or just sit in silence, just being it. So that's beautiful. So we keep talking about the Santas and signs, and they keep coming. And I know because I have you like here exclusively before the deck even appears online. And um, hopefully for people who can watch it, I will be posting it in a few days. So we're talking a few days before I post it, but you are going to show us some of the deck, right? <laughs> so before you do, just tell us when the deck you think it's going to come out. What, do you have any release date or is it kind so, of... Still... So here's a funny thing is um, in the next few days, it's they're, they're supposed to arrive, but you, you know, you gotta be kind of humble with, with 
shipping on things, <laughs> but hopefully they'll come in the next few days. But I, I have my front door open with my screen on it because I had this sense, I'm doing this video with you and then I need to re-record the video for that Oracle class that we have. So I'm gonna do it after we do this. I have the sense that the deck might come while these recordings are happening. So I've got the door open. So when the, I, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so, but it should, it should be soon. Um, but so I want to, and something that I want to start this off with also is that um, I want to give love to one of my grandmothers. So one of my grandmothers, Maxine, she was, um, she had, she had a hard life, part of her life. Um, for whatever reason, she married my grandfather. So this is my Scandinavian. So predominantly Norwegian, little Swedish, little Finnish, I think a little Russian. So these are those people. And for whatever reason, she married my grandfather who was an alcoholic. I don't know why he was an alcoholic. Grandpa wasn't, Richard was an alcoholic, a very difficult human. And so she really, she had six kids. She really struggled. Grandpa was, I don't know what grand, grandpa's demons were, but grandpa was, was rough. And so then later in her life, she got remarried to this man and they, they some, some Christian, I can't remember which denomination, but they became very Christian to the degree that they became missionaries, which is sort of a whole other conversation. But he was a loving man and he was respectful and he was caring. And he, so it's like grandma got this second life that happened. And so I happen because I'm the genealogist in the family and I'm the person who cares about the ancestors and like does family books of the family stories and pictures, like I'm the one. There's usually one or two in the family who do that. So I got some of the goodies that my grandma Maxine made. And so the deck is partially connected to grandma Maxine too. So grandma would do these needle points. So this one is the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. You have, and like I say, I'm not Christian. You have no idea how often I've said that prayer to myself when my human manifesting, controlling, judging side thinks it's not working how I think it should work. I've been humbled so often around that. And then this actually, when I was, so that the month that it's, that the decks come through, this is the one that rocked my world is I remembered this. So it's, it's from Psalm 37 and it's trust, delight, commit, rest. Yes. And so I went, Oh, F, that is like the center of the deck. This, this is the center. Now, keeping it real with the deck, I'm at this point, maybe down the road, but at this point, and it came through so quickly, I'm not doing a classic book for you all at this point. Like I say, there, there may be more writings, but there's going to be a PDF that's going to be about pilgrimages, about living in devotion, some of the practices that I do, some pictures from pilgrimages because they're just so freaking fun. But part of the center of the deck is this arc. There's going to be something that I'm going to do with this arc about how trusting and delighting and then committing and then resting, like that's really an alignment. There's something about that. I yes. love that. I love that. Oh my gosh. And then oh yes, gosh. it's so important because it's like this natural cycle we always fucking have forget about. And delight, how cool is that? Right? You don't, that's, I think that that's one of the things is I feel like um, organized religion has taken out some of the delight and particularly the Catholicism and the original sin and the shame. And I'm like, oh, hell no. We are divine. Like we do not, I think it's to say, I think it's really at its heart, it's, it's about being humble. But it's come across as being like you're you come in at a deficit, like you owe God. I do think that there is reciprocity, and I do think we do need to have gratitude for this life. Absolutely. But that shameful, you're less than, oh, hell no. Um, so so Grandma Maxine is is part of all of this. And so the debt came through. So as I say, I'll show you some of the Santos first. And I'll show you some of the signs. And then the way that it's 104 cards is that there's 72 santos and signs. And then there's these words that came through, these 32 words, which are to be mixed and matched with the other cards to give you 
the either the perspective or the action that you're to take with wherever you are on your spiritual journey right now. So it's 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 practical. It's got practical. I'm just things. so excited that it's not thirty cards. I'm just like I noticed. Like, you like, want you want more. You can't do more rooms because there is just the set amount of rooms. Right, right. You you're shuffling this tiny little deck. I'm like, oh, it's just something. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> it doesn't right. right. We we need to double the runes. Can we do runes <laughs> times two? Two point oh. Um, so, and they're also smaller. I actually love, this is called casino size or something. Maybe I do okay. that. Oh. It, it's a really magical size. Like it fits in my hands. This could literally fit in your pocket. Oh, and I have to show you something. Prepare to keep your shit together. So look at these, look at this bag I found on Etsy. Oh um, my gosh. The bag, the bag alone is, and there's going to be little, so every single deck is going to be in individualized so i have some old catholic cards some that i got in italy when i lived there in the 80s and 90s and visited some other things that i've gotten at thrift stores so there's every single deck is going to have like three unique different things in it that nobody else will have so oh love that okay i can so send the holy peaks as well you can add them to to the bags you, because we have so many of them in poland you know the holy cards exactly i send you so oh, show us, show us. Okay, I'm showing. Um, I'm making sure, let me make sure that I can, that you can see them. So some of these are roadside shrines. Can you see them, darling? Yes, we can. Okay. So these are, these are at cemeteries. New Mexico cemeteries. Can you see oh, her spider? Oh. <gasps> this is in Oaxaca. New Mexico. Oaxaca. I love this painting. Uh, New Mexico, and look at that. Like what, what is that? New Mexico, so New Mexico has this incredible tradition of do-it-yourself grave making, and they've gotten more into cement. So this little ring says, what would Jesus do? Oh my, that's like the best religious marketing that's happened in 2000 years. WWJD. I'm telling you, that is marketing genius, marketing gold. Do you know how many bracelets have been sold that say, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus um, but so New Mexico has this tradition. So you can see that they'll make, like they'll take the Santos and they'll put them in cement, headstones and things, partially because this is a um, economic thing. You know, there's, there's people haven't had a ton of money here and those headstones are expensive. But part of what it does is it makes them feel very down to earth and real, and they have a lot of spirit in them. They're very, very soulful. Yeah, very and, so, yeah. and also um, here in New Mexico, um, it's, a, it's a very, very living tradition. Most of the cemeteries, unless I go in, as I said, I've been to about 120, the um, there will be people there unless it's a very tiny one. And so um, this is a tradition for the Latinx, the Hispanic, the Spanish people where they're tending their graves, where they are, um, ancestor worship is very alive. And part of what I love about these, it's called my Disintegrating Devotion series, the cemetery series, is my people were Lutherans German Lutherans who came to the Midwest and um, like they were actually really high up in the Lutheran church. Um, pretty uptight, pretty controlled. Um, and my perfectionist, my recovering perfectionist, when I see these sorts of things where the head's fallen off or where cement Jesus, like cement Jesus's head has fallen off, like this is literally something that I've seen over and over again. They'll just wire it back on or they'll, they'll super glue it back on. The uptight Lutherans, one, they're already, it's not going to be as gorgeous and they're not going to have all these flowers with Guadalupe, but they're not, it's, it's more, ugh, and I don't need more of that. Like I need more of it's imperfect, but it's alive. Like it's beloved. There's this celebration. And that's what I feel like some of the other, um, traditions. I'm, my family is also Japanese. So the Japanese are a little more on the controlled side, to be honest. But 
to me, these some of these indigenous traditions, the more southern folks, they we bleed and we have sex and we're alive and we're messy, but we're human and they're not as uptight. And honestly, I've needed that my whole life. Like <laughs> my, my little time crunch German who, you know, is just like overly responsible. I need this to remind me that the decay and the imperfection is exquisite. The backs are beautiful. So the backs are some of my um, digital collage very surreal kind of punk and pop art. So then the, um, these are, and as I say, this, these are, this was only a 52 card deck. So there's 72 in the final, and these are the prototypes. So these are signs along route 66. And the way that I want you to read these is to read them very symbolically. Like we want to try to read the words and have the words mean something, but like read it downwards, read it backwards, read it upside down, um, layer another card over it, but read it. There's a really interesting artist named Ed Fella that I'm going to talk about in the PDF who took pictures, Polaroids in the 70s and 80s of thousands of signs, of handmade vernacular signs across the U.S., anywhere, you know, in a barber shop, um, somebody's painted, they sell tires, but he did it for the graphic beauty and the imperfection of them. And so to me, that's what I want us to do with these. And so along Route 66, in particularly in Arizona, between Flagstaff and the New Mexico border, that's the Diné land. That's the Navajo. They call themselves the Diné. Um, the Navajo land. And so they, they, to make money and to be entrepreneurs, they have had um, shops where they would sell things to tourists. And so some of these are these decaying Diné signs for some of their businesses. Um, so those are exquisitely beautiful. This is probably like one of the most trans, this image is actually ultimately square. Um, but this is graffiti with one of these decaying signs. This was probably one of the 10 most beautiful things graphically that I've ever seen in my entire life. It's perfection. It's so, and you know, we're not perfect, but so there's all of these. So this is the merging of our graphics, our marketing graphics with graffiti, with the decay. Um, this is in decline, an amazing group of graffiti rebels who wear masks and they went into Trump Tower and took over one of the suites. You have to go Google it, in decline, and um, did this political um, statement about corruption in Trump Towers. Like they took the room apart. They, they do huge things out in the desert. Um, this is it. So this was on the way to Las Vegas in Nevada. Um, this was on Route 66 in Tucumcari here in New Mexico. This was in Oaxaca. This was a wall of things in Oaxaca. So those are the, those are the sum of 52 of the images. Now I'll show you the, the little cards, the words that go with. So the back of these, I'll have to see if you can see it. The back of these are amazing. So in Bloomfield, yes. New Mexico, there's a cemetery right next to this huge um, plant, this huge factory. And so this, these are two Mother Marys looking over the factory. Oh, amazing. Wow. So this goes with, so this was from um, Grandma Maxine's Trust, Delight, Commit, Rest. So I feel like these are, these are um, like the major arcana in a way. These are a different color than the ones I'm going to show you in a minute. So these are something that if you want, like kind of the main arc of things, and I'm still learning how to divine with this deck, guys. So, but that was my intention was these are the, these are the overarching themes. So you could choose this separately. And then we've got these other 28 words that, as I say, are either an action or a perspective yeah. that you will add to the other cards that will help how you will approach or how you will look at what you're doing. And they're all very praiseful, devoted um, words. So there's a bunch of those too. So that's, that's the deck. Wow. And I just love how you came up with all these different sizes. And I love it. I even felt like, you know, the four words from your grandmother could be like four kind of um, subgroups, groups, you know, in a uh, exactly. deck. 
but totally. it's, it's yeah i can see so many now potentials of making doing a reading with this deck when mm -hmm. you can pull like four of those pull for santos pull for words <laughs> <laughs> it would be so awesome so i know we're going to maybe do a little sample reading at the let's end of it. our interview yeah let's do can it you, can you just tell me uh with the with the santos and um like the photos that you that you took you basically had gathered those photos over the years right it's not that you just happen to do them right now it's been, um, it's been the last, uh, I started probably when I moved to New Mexico, you know, 12 years ago, I, I was, I had a, a mid-level interest, you know, it was cool. I liked it. But what I found in my life as a, as a creator, as a creative conduit is that there are cycles and times for things to really get activated. Like there are things like how you went, um, you know, that you were Catholic, then you had the break with the church. And then it really got re-energized in you in a way that was really authentic and in a new form. So as I say, since I've been a teenager, I've wanted to visit, I love cemeteries. I have a picture of my dad sitting in a cemetery as a young man, because my dad's really cool like that too. He's part of my influence with all of these things with decay. Um, but um, so the, um, my brain just went blank. What was the, the question images, you asked? When, when the images, you got oh, the images you. over the years, right? I started thinking about my dad. Um, <laughs> and, so, and so it was the last um, couple of years, though, something clicked, something got activated probably three years ago or something, where I became obsessed with it, where it became this thing that was like water. Whereas, where, and so finding these cemeteries in New Mexico, particularly in Mexico too, but in New Mexico, a lot of them, other than the, the, the large population centers, which is only like three cities, um, there, it's very, very rural. It's very clannish. People have lived here, some of them for like, other than the, the Native Americans, the, the Spanish, the Hispanic who've come for like 400 years. And um, there, a lot of these cemeteries are hidden or they're in little tiny towns. There's not one cohesive directory. You have no idea how many hours I've spent um, Googling things to try to patch together. And there's, as I say, there's nobody has one cohesive list. And a friend who's very psychic said she feels like some of the cemeteries have cloaked themselves um, for a whole variety of reasons. But so it's been this journey, this incredible journey where I've gone to parts of New Mexico that I probably also wouldn't. And, I, and New Mexico is a great love of my life. I am married to this land here. This is, this is my soul place. Um, so it's probably, as I say, the last couple of years. And last December, I was in Mexico for a month and went to Oaxaca for the first time and then went back to Guanajuato. And so there were a bunch that were taken there also. So yeah. it's probably the last three years, it's, I've been obsessed with it. I think I asked because um, it just reminded me of, you know, how often as humans who we get something like an inkling oh i love yes. this yes then you don't think then oh am i going to make money from it like it's not what you do you jump like you do it without knowing if ever something is going to come out of it if you're ever going to use it for anything and i think that's what creative types do so well that they actually follow the call and I think if I could, I would love to encourage everyone in the world to like, if you have this little something that you love doing, just do it because you never know. It might take years. It might yes. take sometimes more than three years, it might take 10 years Yes. for something to really emerge out of it. Sometimes it might not. And you might just have yes. had fun and that's it. But yes. I see it so often when like even with sandy from this rose oracle she also had like photographing roses and photographing roses and she's thinking why am i photographing roses <laughs> and then boom like whatever yeah. year or like however many months later she gets the little uploads just something what you said that like you know on 18th of september you got like poof, you're going to make a deck yeah so i i love it because i think this is really something um worth making sure that we spread the message about because like yeah and it's just trusting the process it's really important and you just so beautifully articulated basically i would say if there was a main mission statement for what 
I would like to offer as an artist and a teacher and somebody who inspires other people, a maker, a creator, a conduit, is that, you know, we talked about in the last interview, I'm writing a book about wasting time. So wasting time, air quotes, um, is about this idea about getting the fuck out of the way, getting out of the way of this inspiration and following impulses without an expectation of an outcome. But you do it because you're in love with it, because it's amazing. Now, here's the thing that happens when you do that, when you follow these impulses, when you trust them, this is that dialogue that I talked about earlier. When you enter into this dialogue, this stream of dialogue, you start to get more. It gets bigger, it gets deeper, it gets more interesting because there's this trust dance between your muses or wherever you wanna think this comes from, these inspirations. And so this piece about, this essential piece about following it is you're feeding your creativity. You're feeding, you're feeding your creative courage because this takes courage and this takes trust. And so this is where we come back to this, like this deck, you know, like surrender. This is, this could be used, this deck could be used for creative journeys as well as spiritual journeys is, is who are the allies who are helping me and what do I need to do to receive? Because this is about receiving and then you translating it, you know, us translating. But you do it because you love it so much that it, it changes everything in your cell, in your energy field, in your cellular DNA changes when you do things that you love. We don't trust that in the Western world. We think it has to apply to something. We're going to decide that there's an outcome when we begin. You will never, ever make anything visionary, really, truly innovative and visionary if you do that. It doesn't happen because you need to be open to all of the impulses and then you weave them together and then, oh, <laughs> I had, I didn't, I didn't know I was going to make a deck eventually. I, I knew I wanted, I'm, I'm a, you know, an entrepreneur, so I knew I would want to market them and sell them at some point but I didn't think I was making a deck. So what you said was probably the most important thing we're saying in this whole entire video. Was <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important. And I know that like, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, you including like do it, but uh, yeah, as you said, our Western world is just not really encouraging it because mm -hmm. you need to have a plan, have an outcome, have, you know, like, um, and, and make some money, not you better make some money at it. I remember when I started doing wands or when I started doing teaching hula hoops, like that was the last thing I even thought of. <laughs> and then it always comes with money. Money is fine. Like, you know, we, we want money. Why not? We want money. It's not, uh, it's never really the <clears throat> main motivation because I don't just want money. I want money to do yeah. something. Money for itself. It's like nothing. I want right. money because beyond the money is the desire that I would like to get with the money so i think yeah it's awesome to have money it's awesome to live magical life but yeah that is an important message and i'm glad we got to it so yeah. with the santos and science deck um which is coming hopefully around end of october we yeah, yeah that's, for it. That's, it. that's our yeah and you also decided to offer a class with mm -hmm. the deck can yeah. you tell us about this? Like, what can we learn? And maybe before you start, I even want to mention that I am doing the class of Oracle of Initiation, the four-week class that you offered. And I am loving this class. So I wanted to tell you in person, I know that I wrote you, but I'm really loving this class. And I have tried, you know, from our second meeting to do this yeah. reading uh, with a friend of mine. And... I, I will actually, if I, whenever I have a live session with a client, I'm going to do this because the experiential way of how people actually resonate with the images, it's so personal, it's so different from what your interpretation can be. You can always offer your interpretation as a, you know, yeah. backdrop to what they see, but it was really cool and uh, I love it. So I really hope that you maybe offer the Oracle of Initiation class in some format. Yeah. Because I know now it's very personal. We have people taking part. Right. In one, but maybe for people to upload. Or I'm just yeah. throwing it out there because I think it's a really cool class to offer. And the ways you are using 
oracle of initiations are very valuable i think for people so it's really cool i love it so okay. tell us about santos Thank now you. like what can we like, yes can we learn and how did you like what did you invent yeah there's a cup so there's a couple of pieces that i want to say about this that i'm so excited about once again i've fed this i've fed being a conduit and a creator for so long mm -hmm. that my channel's really strong. Like, you know, I've reached the level of mastery because it's been so long that I've done this. Um, and so also sometimes the amount of information, it's like a fire hose of information that comes through when it comes through. But as I say, I've apprenticed to this for so long. And so this is something, if this is important to you, to, no matter where you're at, know that your skills will grow. Know that your access to visionary things will grow. That, that's what happens when you apprentice to this. And so when the class came, so the deck came through and then I thought, we need a class and we need a class around the end of October, beginning of November, when, it, when it's Dia de los Muertos, All Saints Day, Samhain, it's the Carol Apache New Year, that's when they begin their, their cycle calendar, which is very important to them. And so the first thing that touched me was, once again, back to Grandma Maxine's, this, I thought, okay, there, I want four parts to this class. So for some reason, there's four pillars to this class that we're going to do. And then, as, as I said, my channel's strong. So these four terms came through that feel like they're the parallel flip to these four that my that my grandmother had and so it's got these four sections so so the the rest was from my grandmother though at the end of that so what we've got is we've got the four weeks pause pray purify and pledge so if we flip those pledge becomes trust purify becomes delight which is an interesting one pray becomes commit and pause becomes rest so i felt like this, for some reason, as I say, I just, this stuff's all intuitive, guys. <laughs> it's all intuitive and it's all organic. Like it's, it's evolving. But the, so the class became these four different sections. And so, and I'm going to, I'm going to post something on Instagram um, towards the end of this week about the class and the sections of the class and have it look nice, easy to share. But so the pause piece is about entry etiquette. So this is something about how if you want to be a person who has a life of this devotion in motion and these, this dialogue and these relationships, th there's protocol of respect and of listening and of offerings and exchange. Like there's important things to know. So this is the, the two subjects that will come under this is the alchemy of allowing and the journey to the cavern of lost dreams. So the journey to the cavern of lost dreams, one of my other shamanic friends, did this in the three-year shamanism study that he did with the foundation for shamanic studies and i see this as claiming something that belongs to you that you want not so much as things that you're depressed about that you didn't get but more there's something and, and we'll talk much more about that in the class then the prey piece is about threshold teaching so that's about how there are these liminal spaces. You, what you're going to need to do is you're going to, you go between the worlds. And so this, these liminal spaces, like how do you navigate those? And my Oracle deck, like that is the Oracle of Initiation deck, is these liminal spaces. So that's about yielding to spirit and holy paradox. Holy paradox, we could do a whole PhD on holy paradox. Purify. So Carolyn Mace, M-Y-S-S, -S, is one of my main teachers, amazing, brilliant human. And um, so she, in some of the archetypes one, the, the audibles that I'm listening to right now, the 12-hour audibles one, she was talking about reclaiming your fragments in different time zones and about how most of us are not in the present. We, we're musing over or depressed about something that wounded us in the past or we're worried about the future but co-creative intense visionary power you have to be present it's in the present it's organic as i said and very dynamic and you you can't be back there or up there you have to be right here you know it's an eckhart tolle moment so this is going to be about reclaiming and bringing your calling your soul back which is a whole nother story of how my life changed when that happened so two things that we're going to do there. It's a good day to die, which is important. 
and then journey to the Sami grandmother with the bow. So that's something that I want to talk about more in a moment after I do the last piece. So the pledge piece, the fourth part, being is devotion and motion and all the true vows. So this is about the original instructions, which is from this amazing book called Braiding Sweet, Sweet Grass, which may be maybe one of the most three most beautiful books I've ever read in my whole entire life. And then Modern Mystics Without Monasteries, how that's what we are. That's a Carolyn Mace thing too. Um, we're mystics without monasteries now. You know, like nobody's feeding us and it's not really quiet all the time to the degree that I would like. Um, so that grandmother of the bow. So this was, I don't know, 10 years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. So there's, I took a class through the Foundation for Shamanic Studies by this person, Elo Gao, who is um, a Sami, was a, he died a couple years ago, a Sami shaman. This is an amazing, this there he is. It's an amazing book. I, he, since he's dead, I don't know if the book's still available. You can see all of my references in the book. But when I went and took that course, th this is way too long of a story, all the amazing things that happened, but the Sami drums have all of these amazing symbols on them. They were amazing symbolists. So this was one of the last places in Northern Europe where their shamanic traditions, their mystical traditions survived because it was so cold, the missionaries didn't want to go up there. It was way up there. You know, this is the Laplanders of the Sami. And so in the class, I log out, somebody, we were looking at the symbols on the drums and um, it was, it looked a little bit different than that, but see, there's some of the symbols. Yes, yes. We, um, somebody said, what's that one? And he smiled, you know, like a spiritual teacher who knows something that you don't know yet. And they're like, oh, your world just opened up. Had that happen so many times. And um, he said, that's Yuxaka. That's with a J, Yuxaka. It's in the Oracle deck. She's in the Oracle deck. Um, and here, we'll find her. And it's, so she's the grandmother of the bow. And so he explained to us, so this is the, this is the card in the Oracle deck. And this is the uh, this is how you spell it. Uh -huh. One of the ways you spell it. There's a lot of ways to spell it. But um, so grandmother of, so she is, so there's this great, so there's the Akas. So the Akas in that Northern European tradition are the mother gods. And so there is the main mother god who is Madaraka. And then there's her three daughters, Sarasaka, Yuksaka, and Oksaka. And so they all have to do with um, women and childbirth and menstruation, protecting women, protecting the home. Um, so Yuxaka is like um, Kali in some ways, Hecate. She's one of those dark mothers who will cut away what no longer serves you. She has arrows that are alive. She teaches sex magic, but she's one of these, the, the, um, channeling in the oracle deck she speaks about how we are going to kill what no longer serves you so that you can be resurrected because you don't you don't get new things without letting old things go it does it doesn't happen it's look at nature there's a cycle of decay and then resurrection that's how it works and so when we were in that class we ended up doing with ilo gal we ended up doing a journey to her that was honestly it was pretty hardcore, so um, you know, be prepared that this 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 is this is really this is a powerful journey that we will do, and and you can choose to do it or not. And the rest of the class probably isn't as intense as this piece, but this piece is amazing. And and I don't know how many there's not a ton of people in the West. I wished I spoke some of those Scandinavian languages because there's a lot more information about these things if I spoke those languages. But um, we're going to go to Yuxaka. And we're going to do this journey and we're going to, to, and she said, you know, I had to ask her, I had to ask her, can we do this? Are you, are you good? And she's like, yes, I will, I will tell you the protocols of what we will, she hasn't told me yet, but we'll find out. Um, but so that's one of the pieces. So the class is going to be really amazing in it. So it will start on at the, on October 30th and you'll start to get the content. So twice a week for four weeks, you'll get an email with information. You, a class. I'll probably do it on Teachables. You'll access Teachables. And then we'll have two live calls. So the first call will be November 6th, and then the second call will be November 20th. 
And so I'm hoping that everybody will have their decks, their Santos decks. So part of it also that we're going to have is the funky fortune cards. So the funky fortune cards are another piece where there are, it's this whole um, collection and every single collection is completely different because I'm a fanatical collector and I've collected cards for years, Oracle cards, children's cards, game cards, um, playing cards, a lot of them at thrift stores. But so you get this packet of all of these really cool, different, unique cards. And then you get these stickers, these Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz, oh, Tim Holtz stickers. And you randomly choose a card and then choose a sticker without looking and put it on the card. And then you read everything on the card. You read the images, you read the numbers, you read the words, and you read these messages that you got on the stickers. So this seems kind of random and playful and, and goofy in a good way. You will be surprised. You may not immediately get the message. Sometimes you get the message a little down the road, but this is real. So you and I are gonna do, we're gonna do a couple of funky fortunes here as a reading for all of us who are here watching so that you can see what this works like. So let me just ask, because I didn't understand. So this funky fortune cards, are you going to send them with the decks to people or are you, everybody's going to do their own or how? Because I didn't understand. They will, no, they will be sent. So that's part of the class. So you're getting, so you're getting an amazing amount of material <laughs> yes. for, this, for this class. You're getting, a, you're getting a rock star amount of material. You know, uh, unfortunately, shipping to Europe is expensive, you beautiful humans. So you... Um, you, should, you all should join my mailing list. If you go to my melissalucia.com website, it'll pop up and say, join my mailing list. My mailing list always gets the best deal. What, what they got, I'll just tell you. So there's a blog post that explains all of this, where you can sign up for this, where you can order a deck, all of that. The, the mailing list gets $30 off of that price that you see there. Um, it's for the United States, it's $300 for the class, and for the Santos deck, the new Santos deck with little charms and everything, and for this Funky Fortunes packet. So you get all of these things to play with the class. And, and you're, you're taking the class. You're coming to the class. So you're... <laughs> you're, you're I, hope, I still want to take it live. Isn't it any... Is this possible that you could make it at 4? Then it would be 20, like 11 p.m. in Poland. Then I could maybe join in because otherwise when you do it at 5 p.m. it's like midnight my way so let me think anyway about it. I might be able doesn't to. matter we just like let me, I throw let me, it let me at, feel at into you. it i might be able to let me feel into it i'll feel into it but yeah. let's um let's do let's do a funky fortunes right now since we just talked about it and then we'll do a reading with the uh with the santo stack too yeah okay so here's how we're going to do this love so i pulled out a couple uh, just maybe 12 or something of these random cards from that I've collected that might be, like I say, it's all one of a kind. So I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna get this card because they're one of a kind. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm touching cards. So you and I are doing this together. So you tell me when to choose a card. Now. Okay, let's choose another one. Tell me when to choose. Now. Okay, and we're gonna do one more. Tell me when to choose. No. Okay. So we got three cards. So I'm just going to show you the cards initially. So we got this very 1970s kind of Holly Hobby card, which we is one. with a freaking. We just end the interview now. Can we just end the interview now? We're done. Love you all. It's done. Like we we are complete. She has an effing magical wand. <laughs> Right, because I have to take one now since you we like totally it. have to take one. Holy <laughs> shit sticks. Okay, so and it's a joker too. So we've got the trickster up in here. So that was the first one. The second one is a Dr. Zeus, so it's 10. So as I said, we read everything on the card. So we read the symbolism. If you are a numerologist, you're gonna know a lot more about the 10 than I do. I mean, I from the tarot, I know some about the 10. You'll know some about the 10. And the 10 can mean lots of things. But look at that. Look at all that cake we have on the back. So that's our second one. And then we got Queen, which is so cool. It makes me think of walking with Mary and Hetian. Wow. So 
here's what we do. So here's the second part of this. So there's a couple of different sets of stickers that we're playing with. There's these general inspirational ones that Tim Holtz does, and you can order these online at hobby stores and things. Um, message me if you want to know exactly what they are. But he has a Halloween set, which the Halloween set is a little um, creepier, a little stranger. It's perfect for this between the veils time. So we're gonna we're gonna choose a little bit from those, and then we have one. So these are what the these are what the stickers look like, guys. Um, and then we're going to choose one just from the inspirational ones. So once again, so, so we're going to start with this one. So this is the message for all of us. So somehow, though, Kasha is woven into this with her wands. So we're going to see what messages come and see how that connects with the wands. So I'm putting my finger on the stickers. So tell me when to stop. Stop. All right, so I'm pulling this sticker off, and I, you, you're supposed to choose the stickers not looking. Like, this is not your conscious mind choosing this. Okay, so let's choose another. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. And then we're going to choose one more. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. All right, so here's what we got. I will read it and then I will show it to you. So the first one that we got, the first um, stickers, bouquets, cut flowers, and funeral designs. And aren't you offering now readings with plants? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I am actually, yes. That's so funny. Okay, so that's 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 a little one that and, and you I put them on just totally intuitively. I was like, oh, it kind of wants to go here. It wants to go on the back. Sometimes they want to go around the edge. You know, so you get some words here and some words there. Okay, so on the back, we got the strangeness of the incident. So, and that's with the Joker, that's with the trickster. So let's see what other cards we get because and stickers, because I'm not totally sure what that means, but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last one, live your dream with passion. So that feels like what you and I were talking about, about follow your passions without expectations. Wow, okay, so, I love So now that. we're going to do this one, Dr. Zeus. Okay, tell me when to stop, babe. Stop. Okay. And then we're going to do two on this one. Tell me when to stop. Stop. So this one, oh, this is very strange. And this may be something, as I say, that you and I later or someone else from this, this recording goes, I know what that means, because <laughs> sometimes you don't. And that's part of the mystery. Do not go into a spiritual path thinking you're going to understand it all, because you never will. That's part of the deal, is the mystery and the void. We understand some of it. And some of it, we have the grace to go, I don't understand, but I'm going to work with what's happened. And so some of it this comes says, later also, because I think we also set on time, like we have to know now yeah. when the message okay. is coming through. Exactly. Exactly. So lizard's leg and howlet's wing. What's a howlet? Do you know what a howlet is? No. I don't, I don't know what a howlet is. So that's right above the 10. And then it says, have an open heart. But so when I said lizard, you know what I saw? This image from your new deck. That Paul uh, with this uh, rosary oh. with Mary. I just yes. Heard of when you said that lizards, just this. Yeah, that seemed. You know, I don't know very much about some of those those more southern things like the root work and the grigri and the, some of that voodoo things. That's not something that I know a lot about. But it felt like that. It felt like voodoo or some. This is on my Instagram, folks. Um, okay, now we're doing queen, darling. Okay, so tell me, tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay, and then we're going to do two of these. So tell me when to stop. 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 Okay, so what we got for the queen, life was meant for a great adventure. And we've got <laughs> a deck about pilgrimages. And then someone digging in the ground. That's interesting. You know, it's, this is supposed to be more graveyard, but it makes me think of your plant 
your plant readings and being earthed, like being being more ascend, being more earthen to ascend. And then pluck my bleeding heart. Oh, my heart is bleeding after elections uh, yesterday. Pluck your bleeding heart. <laughs> Oh, I love this. So those, so that's what the funky fortunes are like. And so this is, those are something that you would put on your altar and that you would look at over the next month or something, because some of it, like I say, we won't immediately understand some of the messages. Some of the messages are prophecies. Some of the messages, it's like dreams, how there's prophetic dreams, how dreams will prophesy something that's happening that hasn't hit yet. Um, so, so there's, so there's that piece. So let's do a reading also. I want to do, I have a sense, I really want to do a reading for you. Um, what's with, this, with the new Santos deck? What yeah. do, you, what's do you sense is something that, that we would, you would like to know about um, right now with the Santos deck? Um, well, I do feel like I'm in a 10. <laughs> I do want to know when I'm going, where I'm going. <laughs> I know I was I supposed to have trust and you know just like move but I feel like I'm like at the end and the, I'm in a birthing canal so maybe some advice on what like how to best navigate right now yeah I love that and that that's always that's always just good advice what what's in the field what what am I to know at this time what do I not know to ask you know those those are solid questions always because that's the thing about divination is it gives us a perspective that's usually beyond what we might understand that opens things up. That's, that's, that's part of why I do divination is, is that, that sort of support, guidance, expansion. So I'm going to pull two cards from this. I put the, I put the boys and the girls because it's generally kind of more male or female. A, a few of them are non-binary, but um, I, put them all together and then I have the signs out separately. So we're going to do two from the Santos and one from the sign and then we're going to do some words. So how to support you now. And I'm going to put the, and I'll take a picture of this and I'll send it to you. Um, so, all right. And you've got two of the females, which is interesting. You know, it's interesting. I, I know that some of the people from the uh, walking with Mary Hetien's Facebook stuff, they probably wanted the whole deck to be female, but it wasn't female, all females that were in the cemetery, guys. In fact, honestly, there's more Jesus than there are the females for whatever reason. There was, you know, no, no value judgment. It was just what, what came through and the quality of the energy of the images. Yeah. Okay. So here's, ooh, gosh, they're beautiful together. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. I love that. That is it like a broken glass on the Yeah, it's there. almost like a gunshot or something. So yeah, it, it looks like a gunshot. broken spine or something. I don't know. Just like wow. And then this one was down in Mexico and somebody had hand painted this um on their grave and it was exquisite. And then this again was on Route 66. Oh, I did the act cope. Dine. But Right. So, and, and we could almost, you know, like I say, getting away from trying to make those words what they are, you kind know, of layer things on top of each other. So now I'm going to pull you. So I've been pulled the first time I did a, one pull so far for myself and I put the words above and below, and then I chose one of these. So I'm going to put a word above and below each of them. Like I say, I'll take a nice picture of this and send it to you. So it's a bit like a story that we're reading. So for this one, we got rejoice above and flow below. Huh. So that's interesting. And you said it, you thought it looked like a spine. What did you say you thought it looked yeah, like? Yeah, like a spine somehow because of those rays on the side and because you don't see the face. I don't know, somehow when I, my first look at it. Like was a spine. It, and that's exactly how we want to read them. We want to read them totally intuitively. No, look, so it's you, interesting because spine usually feels so stiff and kind of structured and ordered. So and you want to be flexible. Of, oh, yeah, interesting. So we want the flow and the flexibility. So that's yeah. what we've got there. So then we've got, for this, the sign, we've got glorify and honor. So what, what's your sense with that? Because I saw from the letters, I saw 
I know it says cucked, but I saw act and I saw cope and somehow I saw bat. <laughs> and bat. I love it. I love it. You are reading these exactly how I want you to read them. It's wonderful. I want to honor my bat and glorify my act. <laughs> yes, and glorify your act. But it's so to cope. <laughs> so question, what what would you is there something different of an act that you would think in this birth canal, you know, this this hourglass where you're we're in the tight part before you go is there a different act that you have a sense that you are to do well i think that goes nicely with the other card because i seriously sometimes think that like you trained by the society to think like yes. plan this mm -hmm. if you don't know this like you have to yes. know your 10 next steps or you know five year fucking plan or whatever yeah so i think rather than do that like to cope better <laughs> it's like you know like just use this flow and rejoice which goes well with the delight from the therefore you know part of you well and guess what i decided then i was going to pull one of these and i forgot and then so this is your act my trust yeah, yeah. that's your act that's your act baby okay so the last one so this is interesting i'm really excited to see what you get from this babe so with her we got pledge and anoint. Wow. What does that mean to you? Pledge and anoint. Hmm, I don't know. What are you, what are you, what are you pledging? So in the um, class, the, the last one is devotion and motion, all the true vows the original instructions and modern mystics without monasteries. So you clearly, both of us, probably everyone watching, were modern mystics without monasteries. So the, what that says to me is we get to figure out how to have this balance between having this very ex channeled, ecstatic, lots of messages being very sensitive and intuitive, how we are to be resilient and take care of ourselves. And that is on every level, energetic, physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, so my question is, you know, with this pledge and the anoint, what, what's the next level for you as you're in the birth canal of pledging? And to me, anointing is like self-authority, it's like sovereignty. You can anoint other things outside of you, but I think there's also kind of a self-anointing. Yeah, that like sanctifying something that you maybe hold like sacred or like right. make that potent. Well, maybe it's this, um, so it can be on so many levels, but if I go on the mundane level, maybe pledging my alliance to teaching because I really want to move next year mm -hmm. into more of a teaching. Uh, like, yes. So maybe this a little bit. But on like the personal growth level, I, I totally, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't know. So I, I do, I get, I'm getting a sense that it has something to do with, with the Black Madonna, like the overall archetype of the Black Madonna. Like this is something that's both, that's gonna be personal. Like you're gonna have a personal, which is as teachers, as mystical teachers, it, there, you can't separate the two. It's like art, art and spirituality. But the, you, there's some arc that you're going through. And we talked about this l last time you and I connected about astrologically and all these things changing and moving and all these things happening. But there's something, there's some, it's interesting. It's the classic coming out of the wound. Like there's some old thing that you, that there's been a wound for you that the power is coming through in a way that you didn't anticipate. Like literally, this feels like it's out of left field. So you'll have to tell me when you realize what it is, but it's like, you didn't see it coming. And then it was like, oh, oh, that. And like, it becomes this, it's, it's, and it's, it's not the plant stuff, but it feels like it's like that. And it's not that that's not connected, but it's, it's its own thing. Like you don't know it's, it's here. You don't know yet, but it's yeah. close. And so there's something though, so the Black Madonna is tied up in that. But somehow there's going to be then your teaching is going to go in a little bit of a different direction because you're going to have this inspiration from this new piece that's come that's really going to speak to a certain audience. 
that's my hit. That's interesting. I totally take that. Thank you. You're welcome. Because that's I really great. feel like I'm not. Yeah, that that that's really felt right. Like it's just like I I kind of feel like feel it, and it's in you yeah. know like I know yeah. it's there, but I don't know what it is. That's why the other cards I'm like yeah association yeah, right? straight away, and this one I'm like no, yeah. <laughs> nothing yeah. comes in. So <laughs> I've got a question. Is there some way on your altar, and I just keep looking at your altar back behind you, is there some way on the altar, maybe even in the center of the altar, that you can make some sort of a void? That you, I don't know if it's a black piece of paper, I don't know if you have something, if you have a shell that feels like a void, can you make some sort of a void in the center of things so that as it's filtering through, you, it's, it's calling forth, it's a petition, it's a it's a it's an opening it's saying yes i shall receive this but something that's a void that, that it's very clear to you this is reminding me that something's coming through and i i'm receiving it perfect i will do that i love it and you know me being a baroque lady stuffing everything <laughs> <laughs> totally. i will be excited to make some void space my husband uh, yes. loves it he i love it say, i can't wait you like gotta... move this onto tag a flat tag, tag me baby tag me when you uh tag me on when you put it on instagram if you do or yeah thank you so much and i think we do we do have to wrap it up because we yeah, are, um hour and a half nearly oh we just you and i could talk for the next 14 years straight <laughs> but thank you so much for the reading and i really like it because i think it shows how uh, creative you can do card reading and how creative you can be in uh, with the card and how you can kind of don't have to know all the answers straight away. You don't have to know. And I love this kind of little psycho magic that you can actually do at the end of the reading. I love when this happens during the reading, that you have some idea or that you can actually physically create or do an altar about. I love that. So yes. thank you so much. Um, all the in information about the Santos and Science deck and about initiation, about your classes, I will link below for you guys. If you resonate, if you want to check it out, please do. And I love your creative mind, Melissa. So thank you again for gracious love you too, babe. Me here, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So all the best. Go and get creative. Go and create something. Follow your delight. Yes, <laughs> yes. And um, maybe we'll see you during the class. Trust, delight, commit, and test. <laughs> Bye, yes. everyone. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Okay, bye.